Welcome to Sal's Classic Bodybuilding Archives, where today we take a look at June 1975 Muscle Builder Magazine, where Arnold talks about how he built his 58-inch chest. Today's episode will be a summarized reading of the article. I will include screen grabs at the end of this video so you can read the entire article on your own. When Arnold first put foot on American soil six years ago, I said to him, you have the potential to be the greatest bodybuilder in the world. I brought you here because I want to work with you, expose you to my principles, ones developed by the Weeder Research Clinic, and together we can help you build muscle never before dreamed possible for any man. Training still excites Arnold. When he was in Germany, he was bombing his pecs in a regular manner, concentrating mainly on size, giving no thought to muscle priority and its eventual outcome that was to make one of his main stocks in the trade, his pectorals, split like a stock in a bull market. The split I am speaking of is that line that slices across his pectoral to separate the upper pec from the lower pec. From a wide smooth surface, when at ease, Arnold's pecs will leap into a double feature when he flexes. When you apply certain training techniques to a muscle, you can make it react in ways beyond belief, and it will work for anybody. Arnold brought up an interesting verification of this. I don't think development has much to do with natural potential or structure. He declares as an afterthought, of his initial years in the game. In Germany, all the guys had high biceps because we all trained the same. We all had weak triceps too because we didn't know how to train them like the biceps. The same thing happened with the chest. Our pecs were broad and thick, but entirely smooth from ascending flat bench presses with heavy weights. I used to do up to as high as 440 pounds on the bench press each workout. When Arnold arrived in this country, his pecs were wide and smooth as he had just described them. I said to him then, do you realize your chest hasn't come near its real potential? Do you know you can make your pectoral split just like the split that occurs in the biceps from specific intense priority training? After a period of bombing his chest, with our new priority program, I asked him how things were going. How was the chest shaping up? Were the splits coming in as he had thought they should? Are they ever, he said delightfully. Franco's getting the most fantastic upper pecs you ever saw. You might know it. It was the inseparable pair at work again, but it was always Franco who would preempt these programs and pack on the muscle before Arnold. The big man was never far behind, however. Whatever way you looked at it, they proved a point. What worked for one man could readily work for another. It can work for anybody who has the determination and the smarts enough to be non-deviating. When we initiated this program, we divided his pecs into four regions, upper, lower, outer and inside. That was a lot of muscle and so we decided to use the basic movements with heavy weights. As you know, the use of heavy weights is relative depending on angles of movement and length of leverage. Whatever it was, for Arnold we pushed the resistance to the limit, made him work hard always. We decided on three basic exercises in the following order. 1. Incline press. 2. Bench press. 3. Flat flies. Since certain exercises may affect individual differences differently, I have asked Arnold to describe his way of doing them in the heaviest, most comfortable, safest manner. Yes, Joe. At the start, I take a good warm-up with a light barbell on the incline press. I do 20 to 30 reps, enough to get the heat in there. For me, 
the medium wide grip is best. It permits my forearms to remain vertical throughout the pressing motion. This takes the stress off the elbow. There's no time for chronic elbow aches. Since I am fresh, the upper pecs start exploding as soon as I complete my first heavy set of inclines. As we discussed it, Joe, the flat bench press struck the lower pec more than the upper pec. I didn't lock my elbows at the top like you suggested, so we kept the movement from being a lockout tricep exercise. Also, the pecs would relax in a lockout, something we didn't want them to do. The flat flies with dumbbells really did the job for my outside pecs. I did them with my arms slightly bent to release the stress on my elbows. Near the top, I did not bang the dumbbells together. Instead, I stopped them at a point where they were about a foot apart. As we know, this kept the tension on the pecs instead of releasing it by letting the dumbbells flop inward past the vertical. I fought gravity all the way. For a while, we had almost decided to let the middle pec go. It was energy consuming and maybe not all that important on top of the three hard main exercises. As a particular contest time crept up, we were both getting nervous. I know what, Joe, said Arnold. I can use the pulleys for front crossovers. It's leverage work and light comparatively. This low priority exercise, done close to contest time, provided maximum gain. Remember one point, hold each crossover position of a repetition for a long count. Nearing the end of this breakdown on Arnold's pec program, I remembered the idea of doing opposing exercises along with pec movements, in other words, supersets. I love the way that works, Arnold commented. I often alternate my bench press with chins and my inclines with dumbbell pullovers. I superset them mostly near contest time. In summing up, I asked Arnold, will you explain how you keep the deep undercut margins of the lower and side pec for all its huge mass? There's one sure way, he replied. Do your abdominal work, burn off the fat and diet. There it is, Arnold's pec program. Try the great Mr. Olympia's way. We think anyone can get 